another world another new set of equips you know what i'm saying hello welcome back to another princess connect video my name is lace and today we are going to be talking about the world 12 the new world we've got new shards coming we've got new pieces of equipment end game gameplay loop let's go through it you guys already know what it is first off let's have a quick look at when the event is dropping itself or when the new content is dropping so it's on the 12th of may and that's at 1 p.m this is a new tc time so i'm just going to convert it because that doesn't make much sense to me that is about 40 hours away i would say so it's going to be next next reset that we actually get the new area all right with that out of the way let's hop back into pre-con and let me show you what that looks like here we go and here we've got mahiru so i am probably actually going to show you the equipment first and what i wanted to show you guys is that it's not all hell it's not like going to be farming 30 shards for every freaking equipment again i know last time it was freaking rough but okay you know what i kind of lied you guys know these guys you guys know this slot the bottom left slot bottom left and bottom right are always like the dankest slots if there is any cool stuff like big physical damage or physical crit rate stuff like that magical crit rate it's going to be in the bottom left or bottom right slot and at base with no refines we're getting 70 attack physical attack as well as 10 physical crit rate when these two stats are kind of like whatever i think it's like hp recovery boost and like maybe magic defense something like that but yeah at max refine you double that so we're getting 140 of that and 20 of that which is pretty big however i hate to be the bearer of bad news but these guys are going to be a 30 fragment piece which means you're going to have to farm 30 of them before you can equip it once what about this guy then like the shield the armor component typically middle left is an armor component however this one is a little bit interesting i suppose this one actually gives 50 attack attack is good i don't know i don't know what else i can say about it actually you know what? i'll cover each of the equipment pieces in detail a little bit later because like a lot of the pieces that we're getting this time around from 9.3 to 9.5 i think almost every piece actually has offensive capabilities all right with that being said i just want to reiterate these guys down here are going to be 30 shard pieces and the majority of these are going to cost 20 shots and i think that's kind of right so let's actually just jump into the quest so i can show you guys what the world looks like awesome so we're moving from the ocean to the desert to the mountains to the yeah whatever man <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I still do that. All right, let me jump over to hard mode and we are looking for map 12. Frick, that really escapes me. Okay. Oh, did you guys see that? That's pretty juicy. I've seen a couple of you guys asking, when can we farm Jun? Jun is in map 14, so that's about two months away. And we've got Jita in map 13, which is uh, next month probably. We also get our third Kokoro shard, which is really nice considering she's a real powerhouse, especially at five stars. Kokoro is just such a freaking good character. Like you can't go wrong with maxing her out. All right, let's go over to map 12 and we've got Mahiru, Shiori and Akino. This is a blessing because Shiori nodes, as you already know, Shiori nodes are cursed. I don't know why, but you never get more than one shard from Shiori's node. The second node can only mean good things. However, it does mean that our stamina is getting stretched really, really frigging thin. As for Akino, yeah, you could farm her. You could go for the four star or the five star, but personally, in my opinion, if you're going to go for her, unless you like her, which I kind of do, you could just consider unlocking her at three star and calling it a day. Even with unique equipment, she's still not really that great and her getting four or five star is just really not a priority however as i have said before she definitely has her utility and uses in cb which never stops surprising me to be honest all right with that out of the way let's get into some spreadsheets because it's the only thing i know to be honest so if i hop back over the normal mode i'm going to come back over here and we can see you know where is our dungeon that's the first question i believe that our next dungeon will be unlocked at probably area 13 or 14 for some reason they added it in here just as kind of like an unlock requirement However, following the original JP schedule, I think they did it at about 13 or 14. No real rush in my opinion, like the coin difference and the mana difference is not that much. However, what I am looking forward to for this one is the fact that there will only be five stages. So looking through dungeon like 10 times a day is kind of like... Aside from that, I think the last thing we are getting is the chapter six of the main story. Uh, let me see the main story here. Let's go. Oh, that is not my main story. Uh, over here. I'm sorry guys, I can't show you what chapter 6 looks like. I unfortunately can't read Japanese. The last thing we've got is a level cap increase from 93 to 98. So as you guys already know, every month we get a 5 level cap increase. So now that we've got all this information, you know, what does it mean, you know? What does it mean? Let's have a look. To be honest, to the average player, not too much. However, for players at cap at like 93, what you guys definitely could consider doing is saving a whole bunch of stamina so that when the moment the content drops, you can actually like spam a whole bunch of stamina that you've saved up over the last day and potentially hit like 95 in one go. I probably would recommend that, especially if you're at 93 already. 93, like you've already been around for a while. I would probably, yeah, let's say, let's do that. So let's talk about this from a min-max point of view. 
moment that the level cap increase raises or like the main quest area is unlocked, you want to have 999 stamina in your hard cap like stamina box and you want to have your guild house completely full. I don't think I'm going to go that hard. Like I've said, guys, I've gotten a little more casual. I'm unfortunately no longer min maxing. So if you guys are around for that, I'm sorry. It's just way too sweaty for way too little gains. And you know, like you can still get screwed over by RNG. However, what I would recommend most people do if you're at 93 is to perhaps like refresh six times, like right before the reset rolls over. What this means is that you get a whole bunch of stamina to put towards your next few levels. And you guys already know how important levels are. Like a lot of your skills are dependent on levels and stuff like that. However, from a real casual point of view, obviously I wouldn't care about this and just go do what you want. As for everybody that's below 93 or not at the EXP cap, just keep doing what you're doing because there's nothing here that actually changes the way that you play. If they had announced there was like a two times normal drop event or like a two times hard mode event, then yeah, I would be like, okay, probably refresh like six times so you can go into it with a whole bunch more like stamina to use. However, we don't have any of that this time. We only have like new content drop. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is I want to go back to the 9.3 to 9.5. Hopefully you guys have already like seen my other video. I think, um, what is it called? It is, which one? Over here, R9.3 to R9.5. So this is, it's just this one with the little Kokoro picture. You know, she's so cute. But let me kind of give you like a summary that's applicable to like everybody. So 9.3 going to 9.5. Generally, all supports are going to want to stay at 8.6. And the reason for that is that at 8.6 versus like 9.5, you actually have a lot more of the HP recovery stat. So I'm talking Yukari, Chika, Yui, Maho. So healing supporters. Then what about like the other kind of supports? Kokoro stays at 8.5 if you care enough, like if you use the Chinese timelines. 8.5 and you like omit her shoes. So let me actually have a look. So Kokoro is going to look a little bit like this. She's going to look a little povo and like not have shoes. But you know, you tell yourself that it's for the better. It's, it's for the better Kokoro. All right, so if supports are going 8-6 and Kokoro is going without shoes, then what do we do about everyone else? It really depends on your priority. So if you are an arena player, I would say generally tanks go at first, especially for P arena. Tanks are just so invaluable. They are your wall between like them and you. If your tanks can hold up longer than their tanks, then hopefully you have one. I'm gonna pop this bad girl up to nine and you can see we have these two new items. More tanking items, it is only good. Tanks, 9-5. Then we've got Ilya. So what about Ilya? What does this shoe? do and it gives her a whole bunch of effective HP. So you can see with the addition of just the shoot, she gains like 2.5k effective magic HP, which is really good. She only gains a little bit of the effective physical HP, which is okay, but like, you know, you can refine all that and then you get even more stats. However, I do know a lot of people are keeping her at 8.6 and that is not a bad choice either. I guess you could say that Ilya herself like is voluntarily a lower priority. She operates very well at 8.6 already. All right, then what about clan battle and my DPS, you know? Let's have a look at Erico. So Erika is getting a piece of armor. I don't like that. You guys already know how I feel about the armor piece. However, like I was saying earlier in the video, a lot of our items this time are actually giving us offensive stats. So let me go over to, I think this tab. Yeah, this tab. And we can see that new stuff is from here onwards. Actually, let me get rid of a bunch of these. All right, guys. So just look from here onwards. So our new pieces, we got 35 physical attack from a frigging armor piece, as well as 10 crit rate. We get something similar with the Azure robe, which is like kind of the leather armor, as opposed to like the hardcore armor. We got 50 attack from a shield like what the heck and we get 70 attack from the sun amulet which we already know then on the magic side we actually get a lot as well we got 15 from the freaking boots however i believe the boots out of all the equipments have the most defensive stats especially if you look at that that's only 15 magic attack we've also got the tiara and the dragon's tears and they're giving five and eight magic crit rate as well i'm telling you the bottom left hand corner these guys they are the key items so if you guys are going for dps you guys already know eight four bottom left item that is the first one you go for however then the question becomes do we slap this armor piece on if you're not following any like chinese or jp timelines then yeah just slam it you literally can't go wrong with more stats it should be fine let's have a look at makoto actually um and she gets this oh she gets the crappy one okay you know what i take that back makoto herself she's getting this crappy one over here which is not giving her like any offensive stats if i bump these guys up i'm sure we're gonna see like a whole bunch of freaking useless stats so let's have a look so look at that violet armor is giving us four defense 10 magical defense and 300 HP. That is so freaking boring, especially for like Makoto, who's more of a DPS character. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Why did you guys have to do my girl like that? I think you guys get my thought process. If you guys see the good one, which is this one, you guys could consider slamming it on. Honestly, like if your Makoto is dying for some reason, then you could slam that one too. But just know that this piece here does not have any offensive capabilities. Let's have a look at a mage real quick, Kyoka. All right, this one gives like some magic attack, which is nice. But Hatsune, same, same. We've got Akari. Oh, she's got a good one, a nice little tiara. So she gets the crit rate up as well as the magic attack. So this is a real 
really great one. Akari really gets the good stuff, huh? Kiara's got the crappy boots, but they're not that crappy. Like, it's better than Makoto's, like, piece of crap armor. Let's have a look at Miyako. It's all tank items. We like to see it. Hyori, yeah, that's a good piece, I think. So that one is giving 45 attack as well as 10 crit rate. So all in all, I feel like it might just be Makoto that's getting screwed. Let's have a look at Mitsuki. The shield gives attack, 50 attack. Let's look at Pekrin. Pekrin gains that, but she's a tank. She wants that. We've got Shiori. Shiori is getting that one. That one's giving physical crit rate as well as damage. Hopefully the other archers will be the same. So let's have a look at Suzuna. Exactly the same. And I believe Arisa is going to be identical as well. Literally everybody is getting good stuff. Oh, Eo gets the good crown. That's really nice. Saren. Uh, yeah. Lower priority. You guys already know my thoughts about Saren. Saren is a support. The only thing she's there to do is to like give the TP battery. Otherwise her damage is lackluster. All right, guys, let's call it a day. That was a long video. Secret message. Mm. Makoto, why? You guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below and help me question. <laughs> why, Makoto? Why do you do this like that? I'd be really grateful you guys have made it to the end of the video and I like that. That being said, if you guys have found this video helpful or mildly entertaining, consider a like, sub, comment. You guys know what it is. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.